Winter, it's not a nice time to be riding your e-mountain bike. The trails are muddy, you're gonna get cold feet, you get numb fingers, and of course a big cleanup after. However, it doesn't need to be as miserable as that. With the right mindset and the right kit, it can be some of the best riding you're ever gonna do on your mountain bike, really progress those skills. So today, we're showing you our ultimate guide to riding winter. The kit you're wearing on those big rides out can really make a big difference. It can literally make or break your ride. One of the first bits of kit you should be putting on for those winter rides is gonna be a base layer. Now, merino wool is a really good fabric to be wearing on these rides. What it does is it wicks sweat away whilst trapping warmth in. So you can get these available for the upper body and short sleeve, long sleeve. You can even get thermal long johns as well. So these are gonna keep your legs nice and warm. If you're riding in a cotton t-shirt, it might keep you warm for a short period, but if you stop, it's gonna trap in that sweat and it won't breathe, meaning that you're gonna get wet, you're gonna get cold and pretty miserable. A waterproof shell is something you definitely wanna invest in for those winter rides. If you wear a puffer jacket, you're simply gonna overheat, you're gonna remove it and be exposed to all the elements, the mud, the rain, you name it, it's not gonna be good. The idea of a waterproof shell is you can layer up underneath it with a base layer and mid layer, and you can remove those if you get hot, then obviously you can still put the jacket on and be protected from all the elements. Also, the Cycling Pacific jacket is cut nice and low to protect your rear from all that spray off the back wheel. Riding trousers, they're an absolute godsend over the winter months. Once you've ridden them, you definitely won't be going back to wearing shorts. Some of them are breathable with a waterproof patch over your bum to stop all that spray coming up. Some of them are even fully waterproof. You can, of course, combine the waterproof jacket and the waterproof trousers to create that all-in-one winter protection, the onesie. Now, you can get mountain bike-specific versions of these, which are quite costly, but they do perform excellently out on the trail, and they do breathe a lot better than the budget ones. A cheaper option is to head to your motorcycle shop and try and find one of the one-piece waterproof suits that those guys ride. They're a cheaper option. They're not going to breathe as well, but they might do the same job on those shorter rides. The two parts of your body that can take an absolute hammering over those winter riding sessions can be your hands and your feet. Now to protect these, I strongly suggest a good pair of winter gloves. You can get these in waterproof options, windproof options, or combine both of those to get the best of both worlds, keeping those hands nice and toasty. Also your feet, you can get waterproof socks for them, meaning they don't have to get wet and cold either. One thing you definitely want to be protecting for those winter rides is your eyes. You definitely need to be wearing some form of eyewear, be it glasses or goggles, it's your call. Usually you can get a lot of debris firing up from the trail, usually hitting you in the face all over the body, but you can guarantee that big dollop of mud is going to hit your eye just before that big drop or jump. There's a few different ways you can set up your bike to attack those winter rides. First up, mud guards. There are definite essential winter items. Now these can make a big difference to the amount of debris firing over you and your bike. They come in a wide variety of sizes and shapes. You can get the full on moto style ones like this ones. They offer the ultimate protection. You can get the smaller mud flap style ones. They're great too, but they don't offer quite as much protection for the bike. For the rear, you've got little options that can come in and protect the linkage and the shock, more protecting the bike rather than you. But you can go for the full on blown rear mud guard. These are great at saving all that mud firing up onto you and again, covering that bike. So mud guards, get them on your bike for winter. Pedal choice is something you want to think about for those winter rides too. Now, if you're a clipless pedal rider, I strongly suggest sticking a set of flats on your bike. It's simply going to inspire confidence. It's going to give you a bit more skills in those loose technical sections and allow you to put a foot down should things get out of shape. Mud tires are a worthwhile investment for those winter rides. They can make a massive difference when it comes to those sloppy conditions. Mud tire is gonna drive you up those climbs. It's gonna hook up on those downhills and let you dive into those corners. It's gonna let you ride those sloppy trails just like it's summer. A soft compound open tread designed downhill tire is gonna be one of your best options. Just remember to try and get a big thick casing on those tires because fixing punctures in winter definitely isn't fun. Mindset and motivation is really important when it comes to riding in the darkest depths of winter. Approach it with a positive attitude. The best thing about riding an e-bike is you can make it as hard or as easy as you want. If you're getting bogged down in the mud, engage boost mode and get out of there, no bother. 
Riding with friends is also a really good way to increase morale. Once you start following your mates down a trail, everyone's sliding around all over the place, you have forgotten about those warm, dusty summer rides. Where you're riding on those winter rides can make a big difference too. I try and steer clear of clay and chalk. They can be super slippy and pretty claggy. So you ride in natural trails, just stand back and have a look at how wet and how much damage you're actually doing to the trail. If it is really wet and you are chewing up the trail, then I suggest you head to those trail centers. They're designed to cope with those wintry conditions a lot better than these natural trails. One of the best feelings you can get on your e-mountain bike is a drift. Now, one of the best riders, in my opinion, at drifting is Sam Hill. He's an absolute boss of drifting a bike. The winter is the best time to practice the drift technique as the dirt is nice and loose and slippy, allowing for the bike to lose traction momentarily and drift. You most likely end up on the floor a few times, but as your drift practice improves, you'll learn the limits and find yourself doing it all the time and therefore putting a big smile on your face every time you hit that drift button. Climbing on your e-mountain bike is one of the hardest skills to master come winter, but now is your chance to try a few different techniques, such as sitting down to put your weight over the rear tire, therefore providing a lot more grip. Try moving your body weight around to adjust to the bike sliding around beneath you will also get you to the top of the climbs. Think about things such as what power mode you're in. If you're in boost mode, try knocking that power back to trail mode or even eco. You might find you get a lot less wheel spin and a lot more drive up that climb. Also think about what gear you're in. Sometimes a harder gear will get you to the top and therefore reducing that wheel spin too. Another vital thing in winter is to look at what line you're on. Try and find the most grippiest line and scan the terrain ahead looking for things such as roots, rocks, things that are gonna disturb that rear wheel grip and make that climb a lot harder. One thing you're gonna find out on the trails in abundance come winter is gonna be puddles. Now, when you're riding fast downhill, there's no way of working out how deep these things are. Could be a few inches, could maybe be even a few feet deep. Now, these can suck your wheel in and stop the bike at an instant. <laughs> So it's a really good habit to get into is just to lift that front wheel as you go through this puddle. It's also going to keep your feet nice and dry too. So come in, just pick that front wheel up, glide through it. You're going to keep nice and dry. And you're not going to get flicked over the handlebars. However, if you want to clear it totally, you have to employ the bunny hop. That way you're going to hop over the puddle and not even risk a chance of getting wet or get spat over the handlebars. As the saying goes, fail to prepare, then prepare to fail. Nothing rings truer than that and then e-mountain biking in the winter. If you fail to prepare, you can have a pretty nasty time out there. But if you're wearing the right kit and you've got your bike set up properly, then it can be an amazing session out there in the mud and the slop. Let us know down in the comments box below if we've missed anything about winter riding or any little hacks and things like that that you've got for riding your e-mountain bike in the winter. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, but if you want to stick around and check out our video, check out Steve and Adam Brayton absolutely smashing it in the winter in the Lake District. That one's playing down there. Give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Click the globe in the middle of the screen to subscribe to EMBN.